to super maximum security at Archambault Penitentiary near Montreal. St. Anne de Plain, Quebec, just north of Montreal. A special prison for special prisoners. Some of Canada's most notorious are here. Like Clifford Olson, he murdered 11 children. Alan Leger, known as the monster of the Miramichi, he murdered five people. In the Canadian prison system, this is the end of the line. It's beyond maximum. It's Supermax, the special handling unit, known as the shoe, the prison for inmates who are too tough, too violent, and too hot to handle in regular prisons. All you fucking junkies, fucking motherfuckers, can't even do shit! On this day, the prison routine has been disturbed. One of the inmates has been attacked. The fucking snap the guy and he can't even fucking hurt him! Two prisoners were in the exercise yard. Quebec provincial police have been called in to investigate. One prisoner stabbed the other nine times. He couldn't have been planning to get away with it because the courtyard is under video surveillance. Why is the guy in the shoe? Inmate Kevin DeRucci says the stabbing was no surprise to other inmates of the special handling unit, the shoe. The guy's in the shoe for raping other inmates, okay? Transvestites. He's in a population block. He's from protective custody. Of course he's gonna get stabbed. Crime is not supposed to happen inside here. There are 82 men from across Canada housed here in the special handling unit. About a third of those are convicted murderers. But they're not here because of the murders they committed. They're here because they either attacked another inmate, they attacked a guard, or they tried to escape from a regular prison. Except for the time they spend alone in their cells, they are watched all the time, in their cell blocks or by security cameras monitoring the common rooms where they can meet for a short period of time each day with up to eight other inmates. In the Canadian prison system, this is as tough as security gets. The question is, is it too tough? Cameras see and record everything. The flashing yellow boxes draw the guards' attention to movement. Armed guards watch the men in the rooms. If there is a disturbance, they yell a warning. Then, fire a warning shot or drop in a canister of gas. There are reinforcements in the central control room where all the doors can be locked by remote control and every public area can be seen directly. It's kept dark so the guards can see out, but the prisoners can't see in. Inmates are never in the presence of prison staff without handcuffs. Inmates who are moved are escorted by two guards, unarmed for fear of a weapon being seized. This man has a medical problem. Watch how he's given his medication by the nurse. Nurse, this? There is no video surveillance in the cells, but guards search the cells when they suspect something, and even when they don't, they go in at random and check everything. Inmates can buy televisions, stereos, and electronic games. Here's Kevin DeRucci again. He's going to school. Derucci committed a number of crimes, including robbery. He's in the shoe for an assault in prison. On page 13. Okay, there's a brainstorming there. Chances are you've never seen a school like this one. Okay, so read the text. Uh, the teaching is secondary to the security. We have to, um, to take care not to put our head or ears to too much near the, uh, the, the the slot there because if somebody is angry with us he could you know give us a, a pencil 
use a pencil as a pick or something. These courses and others in anger management and substance abuse are at the core of the issue here. Can anybody improve themselves in this environment? Who tells me? Jason Gallant, convicted of murdering three prison guards during a riot. I have to turn around, get undressed, turn around and, and bend over. And then the next day, uh, where uh, the, the day before I saw them upside down between my legs, now they want me to sit in front of them and have them trust the development of my mind to them to teach me how to be a good human being when they have so violated the citadel of my character. The shoe is a correctional disaster. Professor Michael Jackson has been studying Canada's special handling units for more than 20 years. It's you against not just the staff at the special hand, it's you against the world. And you have to fight for survival. And it is, it's dysfunctional. Because when you leave there, you're still fighting. Uh, you're, you're not a better person, you're a tougher person. You're a more callous person. And the prisoners themselves recognize that that's a terrible loss. And what do they gain? What do we gain? I can't think of anything. Living in cells like these, in an institution like this, is supposed to help reform an inmate so he can return to regular maximum security prison and then eventually through the prison system to freedom. But in fact, there are some times when an inmate is released directly from here out onto the street. Inmate Kevin DeRucci had that happen to him the last time he got out. From one extreme to the next, one minute I'm caged up like a animal for years and the next minute I'm out there you know what I mean and uh, I'm supposed to be able to function uh, you can it can't be done I tried it's not appropriate and I'm I'm dead against it the warden of the special handling unit I, I is Mark Artur Hippolyte I don't believe in releasing offenders called Turkey into the community I think we have the capacity of taking appropriate measures as a maximum security institution to control that behavior and prepare the image gradually. But what to do with people like this? The men who are in the special handling unit have problems with anger, problems relating to other people, problems related to problem solving. They've murdered people. They've attacked prison guards. This particular series of outbursts is because men who are not normally near each other have been put into neighboring cells. And if the wrong guys get in the same room, they do try to kill each other. Even here, under the tightest security, they manage to make weapons they call shivs or shanks. Kevin DeRucci used a shank to attack another inmate. Like this person here who I, who I eventually ended up assaulting threatened my life. Threatened my life. Right in court, I'm going to kill you. All over the joint telling everybody, as soon as I get my hands on him, I'm going to kill him. The guy's a psychopathic killer. He's a punk. He had no fucking heart. Oh, sorry. He had no heart or nothing, and uh, I got him first. You know what I mean? He felt he had to do that. Or he was getting me, without a doubt. Without a doubt. What happened to him? I stabbed him two times. He's in a medium security now, and uh, I never got back to me. I've been to maximum ever since. Well, super maximum, maximum. The inmates we spoke to in the special handling unit feel Canadians should know about the conditions there and that they should improve them. I think I'm a man that uh, has some uh, integrity and some dignity. Um, and I find their approach to, to, to dealing with, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll limit it to myself, their, their approach to, to dealing with me is f appealing to my fear of reprisal rather than my humanity. I'm here for punishment. There's nothing being accomplished here. It's, uh, it's, it's just a very angry place. We have committed crimes and we are wrong and we must be punished. That's obvious. Nobody's denying that. But we don't got to be abused. You know what I mean? We don't have to be treated worse than animals. We don't have to be treated like garbage. You know what I mean? And just because we are human beings, there's always 
the possibility that something good might come out of each and every one of us.